Hello everyone, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear community. A warm welcome to this new video. It's great to have you back. Today, we have a device for testing that is undoubtedly essential on any construction site, and it's a spirit level. We're not talking about a typical level that everyone has at home, but rather a very special device here from Bosch with an integrated digital inclinometer. Specifically, today we have the Bosch GIM60 digital inclinometer for testing. What can we really expect from this high-end spirit level, how well does it perform, and whether it's worth investing in or not? I would say let's find out together in today's video. So let's not waste any time. Let's start right after the intro, but if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Quickly subscribe for free and activate the bell to not miss any future videos. You can find the current prices in the video description below. Thank you very much for your support and let's get started after the intro. Everyone knows them, owns them, and uses them regularly. I'm talking about a conventional spirit level. But in today's video, we're not talking about a typical spirit level in that sense. We're talking about a very special one, specifically the Bosch GIM60. This is the device we're talking about, which, compared to a conventional spirit level, has an integrated digital inclinometer and an optional laser module. Compared to a regular spirit level, this one is quite expensive, so I would say let's take a look at what it really has to offer and how well it performs. On the product box, as usual, we find the corresponding label, a large illustration, and of course, additional features of this spirit level. Similarly, there are a few illustrations of the contents in the package. I'd say let's take a closer look at them now. In terms of what we receive in the package, not much, as you might have guessed with a spirit level. This means in addition to all the paperwork, user manual, warranty conditions, certificates, and the like. Furthermore, as seen on the left, there are four integrated AA batteries, and finally, the actual spirit level packaged in a separate bag. That's it. There's not much more included. In any case, I find it quite practical that there's a suitable carrying bag for the spirit level as well as the four AA batteries, which means the device is ready to use immediately. In my opinion, the bag itself is also extremely practical. It has a small handle on the top for carrying and transporting. Additionally, it's padded, which means the spirit level inside is well protected even if it accidentally falls. Positioned on the right side is the Velcro fastener for opening and closing, and not to forget, also included is a small additional pocket or compartment where we can directly store the batteries so that we always have an extra set with us. That's about it for the accessories. Now I'd say let's take out the spirit level so that we can take a closer look at it. And here it is, the good piece, the Bosch GIM60, where 60 represents the length, meaning this spirit level or inclinometer is a total of 60 centimeters long. It should be noted that Bosch offers two variants here, the GIM60 and the GIM120, which is 120 centimeters long. I'll provide a link to this variant as well in the video description below. In terms of the first impression or the build quality, I have to say that this device, as we're accustomed to from Bosch, simply gives a super high quality and extremely robust impression. The device is made of a sturdy aluminum body and, as mentioned, is extremely well crafted. This means that I couldn't find any material residues or sharp edges, which one can actually expect in this price range. Regarding the weight, I must say that the digital inclinometer is slightly heavier than a regular spirit level. Let me quickly check it out. With the 60 centimeter variant, we have a weight of 450 grams and now the Bosch device. Of course, we also need the four AA batteries, which brings us to a gross weight of 770 grams which is nearly 300 grams more compared to the conventional spirit level. From practical experience, I can say that the additional 300 grams in weight doesn't make a big difference in my opinion. However, for the Bosch GIM60 to truly stand out from a conventional spirit level, we need to power it up. 
For that, as mentioned, we have the four appropriate AA batteries included in the package, which we insert here on the top right of the device. As you can see, the direction of the batteries is also nicely marked with plus and minus signs, which means we insert the batteries and off we go. The special feature of the Bosch GIM60 or 120, of course, is not the two vials over here as we find them in the typical spirit level, but rather the display positioned in the middle, or precisely, the inclinometer. The device has a sufficiently large LCD display, which is protected by a thin plexiglass cover, as you can see in the video. This means that, in practice, this cover will probably get damaged quite quickly if one's not careful with this spirit level. Otherwise, it's quite clear and easy to read. Directly below, there are a total of five rubberized buttons. In the middle, we find the most important button for turning the spirit level on and off, as well as for resetting it. As can be seen, after turning on the device, the most important information appears directly on the display. This means that in the center, we have the current inclination displayed prominently, followed by the unit at the top in percentage, the battery level of the spirit level, and directional information with arrows to guide us on how to tilt the inclinometer to achieve the desired inclination. The Bosch GIM offers various units of measurement. Currently, as can be seen on the top right, it's set to percentage. To switch units, we can press the small button located at the bottom left, and we can cycle through all the possible units. Among the available units are millimeters per meter, degrees, and percentage. Another practical button, or rather feature, of the Bosch GIM is located right next to it. The device not only provides visual signals on the display, but also auditory signals. By briefly pressing this button at the bottom, we can see that a small speaker symbol appears in the top right corner, indicating that the spirit level also provides auditory feedback on whether we've achieved the desired inclination or not. This means that in addition to the arrows on the display, which shows us in which direction we need to tilt the device, a beep is also emitted once we've reached the desired inclination. This feature is extremely practical in this regard. However, let's not forget that on the other side, there are two additional buttons. Firstly, the device has a hold and copy button, which, as the name suggests, holds the measured value. This means that if, for example, I place the device on a surface that's inclined at, let's say, 12 or 13 degrees, and I can't read the display correctly, which happens more often than you might think, I can press the hold button here. As can be seen, the current measured value is saved, allowing me to take the device and read the measurement value accurately. From practical experience, no matter how good the inclinometer is, the display is certainly not ideal. This means that in direct sunlight, I can still read the display quite well because it has a backlight. However, in terms of viewing angle stability, it's definitely suboptimal. As can be seen, when I tilt the device slightly, the measured value becomes unreadable. Regardless of how I hold the device, the measurement value is always challenging to read. Therefore, the hold button is used more frequently than one would think. Nonetheless, the hold function works well and has the advantage that I can also transfer the inclination. Let's imagine that I have a beam that's inclined at 29 degrees, for example. So I place the device on it, press the hold function to save the value, and then I can go to the next beam, place the device on it, and automatically, the two arrows show me how to tilt the device to reach the current value of 29.4 degrees again. So now the most important question arises. What kind of accuracy do we really have here? Regarding that, it can be seen that the Bosch GIM is specified with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.05 degrees, which in my opinion is really impressive. However, we can achieve these values only if we have properly calibrated the device beforehand. Just like with a conventional spirit level, there's also a risk with this device that if it falls once, it may no longer be calibrated 100% accurately. But essentially, it's not a problem because that's exactly why we have the CAL or calibration button here. For that reason, I'd suggest checking and performing the calibration. To check the calibration of the spirit level, we now place it on a level surface with an inclination of less than 5 degrees and read the value. As can be seen, it shows 0.3. 
We take a note of that and then rotate the device 180 degrees along the vertical axis, leaving it briefly to allow it to properly level itself. And then we press the hold button and read the value again. As can be seen, it shows 0.8. That means we have a significant difference of 0.5 degrees, and once the difference exceeds 0.1 degrees, calibration should be done without question. To calibrate, we repeat the same procedure, which means placing it on a surface again and then pressing the Cal button. As can be seen, Cal 1 appears on the display. The value starts blinking. We rotate it 180 degrees, leave it briefly again, and press the Cal button once more. Cal 2 appears on the display, indicating that the device has been recalibrated. This can be done both horizontally and vertically. So far, so good. Therefore, as can be seen, the device is now properly calibrated and ready to use. And as mentioned before from practical experience, I must say that I am really very satisfied with this device. The only thing I would slightly criticize here, as already mentioned, is the display. It's somewhat difficult to read at different angles. Additionally, this spirit level or inclinometer has a smooth surface on the underside. There are no magnets or similar features installed as is usually the case with a conventional spirit level. This means that attaching it to metal surfaces is also not possible with this device. Nonetheless, my recommendation definitely goes to anyone who deals with different inclinations a lot because a conventional spirit level quickly reaches its limits. Now, it's your turn. What do you think of this great tool? Do you already have this inclinometer function? Feel free to share your experiences in the comments below. I'm very curious about your feedback. And with that, I'd say that's all for now. If you liked the video, please show it with a strong thumbs up to support the channel. You can find the current prices in the video description below. Thank you very, very much for your attention and take care until next time. Goodbye.